That's why I probably didn't get sent to the castle. Yeah. Okay, we're okay. All right. Okay, I would like to welcome everybody this evening, April 14th, Hello Springs Board of Education meeting. We have quite an audience with us tonight, so this is always exciting to feel the energy in the room. So I'd like to call the order. Roll call, please. Aida, I'm here. Sean will be absent this evening. Sylvia. Present. Steve. Here. Okay. All right. So the next item on the agenda is the approval of the March 10th, 2016 meeting. Second. Second. Anything? Okay. No Sylvia? Yes. Steve? Yes. yes. Evan? Yes. Evan? Yes. 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 All right. Okay, again, I'd like to acknowledge everybody who's present. Um, there should be a notebook floating around. If all our guests would sign in, please. That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, moving on to the communications, presentations, and reports, 2.1. We have a letter from John Day dated April 11, 2016, and a letter from Carleen and the attorney um, dated April 15, 2016. Um, this is 2.2, community comments, and uh, anybody in the room who would like to address the board besides the people who are going to be presenting soon? I wanted to at some point announce um, if Christian was here, there's no potentially be hired tonight. So I don't know if you want to do that now or later, or it's up to you. Okay, no, that's fine. Sorry, I thought that was, that's great. Yeah, yeah just, just that to, now. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. So I um, just want to introduce uh, Jamie Adolph to the Board of Education. I think everybody knows Jamie. Um, uh, but uh, Jamie went through a long process of interviews and you have to go through a few gauntlets, you know, and, and cross a couple rivers, and, and uh, a long process, but uh, he ended up being the final candidate for the position of uh, language arts English teacher at uh, McKinney Middle School to replace Aurelia Blake. We are very excited about Jamie. Uh, we know Jamie well, obviously, as a community member. Uh, we know him well as, uh, you know, the, the daughter of, the son of Virginia Hamilton, you know, and uh, the influence of what he's done in his own life. Uh, as a writer carrying on uh, the legacy uh, himself, being a young adult writer, and, and, and his, um, his great experience with that, and then uh, his work recently in the past three years uh, <coughs> teaching kids in Springfield schools, uh, Springfield High School specifically, exactly his craft that he, you know, he chose to, as his career. And so uh, he's been doing that work, and um, before that, some people may not know, he was a, a substitute teacher for us for a, a while, while he was in grad school. Mr. And, uh, you know, so we've got, we know Jamie really well, and so we're excited about him. Yeah. He's a parent, that's right, of a, a student, Anaya, in our schools as well, and so uh, Jamie is, is going to be a great kid for our schools. Um, we went through a really long process, as I said, and we're excited that he's here tonight. Uh, Jamie, do you have anything you'd like to share with the board by chance? You can step up to the mic if you'd like oh, to. Or, sure. I don't like to get away with sitting yeah, back camera. there. Yeah, camera. <laughs> you don't have to. It's up to you. I'll <laughs> no, it's up to you. No pressure. Ready? No pressure. Ready for you. No pressure, right? The road is this one? Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want to say I'm just over the moon. I'm thrilled um, for this opportunity to work with, you know, my hometown kids. And, um... This district is just amazing. It was amazing when I subbed two years ago before PBL really came into it, and now it's even more so. And I've seen it um, as a parent through the eyes of my daughter from kindergarten, <coughs> first grade, second grade, exhibition nights, and to just be a part of this exciting um, district and the support that comes from the top and the community is just amazing. It's really what it's all about and why I became a teacher. So I'm just really, really excited and the team in the middle school, it was, it, was a, it was a difficult and rigorous process, but not many people might say this, but it was quite inspiring to sit down and to be able to work with the team even for an hour and collaborate and just see the, just, just the high level that they're operating at and what they're bringing for the kids. So to be a part of that, um, I'm just very grateful and I can't wait to get started. So thank you very much. Yeah. That process was interesting because they, one thing we added that was different than any other process we've done before was the middle school team actually met with two finalists and went through an entire process about a project they're working on for next year and worked with each candidate uh, in terms of their ideas and their contributions to the project and, and really went through a whole tuning process uh, which was 
kind of a powerful uh, step in, in a different direction for us. And I think uh, to see her Jamie talk about that, it was a great experience for him. So we're excited that he's uh, on board and we get him. I just have one question. So as fellow graduates of Yellow Springs yes. High School, did you ever have any idea that one day you'd be teaching here? And I'd be on Not the board? in my wildest dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so that's what I always tell my students. You never know what's going to happen in life. You know, you can't you go home again, apparently. But you can't go home again. Be prepared. You know, apparently there's short memories in the community. <laughs> we did our background check. Yeah. <laughs> It's full. No, it's no. It's, I, it's I can't. I mean, speaking on a personal, and I obviously wasn't a part of the official process, but on the personal, the, the personal character that you've had since I've known you as a boy <clears throat> is outstanding. So beyond your professional credentials and your professional accomplishments, I'm thrilled to have some of your character part of our organization. It's been a huge um, uh, lift for for us to get folks of your caliber uh, working with us. So I'm, I'm Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, well, we might be voting on that later. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the danger for <laughs> so, you. are welcome. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to 2.3, Schools in Action. See, it's already a very exciting evening. We have all yeah. these people here to talk about this. We have Jamie. Okay, who's going to step up and start this? No. So maybe I should do a quick intro. Sure. And these guys can come up and, and uh, I'll be brief. Chris, <laughs> they're going to be both the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, you know, we did this great thing about a year a year ago. We, we started really talking about this. And uh, we uh, we had we picked, we did the first thing right. We picked the right uh, educators, I think, to lead this trip. And, uh, you know, Jody. And Eli and Elizabeth had done incredible work with our kids uh, for quite some time. So it wasn't just the trip, there's been all kinds of work to build up to this <laughs> and effort. Uh -oh. And they were, uh, they were great in this project and our kids did wonderful too. So I want to give them a chance to tell you about what they're doing and then they're going to probably end by talking about their plans for the next trip. So what do you want me to put up? Tell me what you want to show. Uh, the PowerPoint that I showed you. Okay. Oh, there's a PowerPoint? I mean, if you have me, you know I'm going to make it <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, So the parents are grueling. So I'll yeah. keep it. How much time did you give us? Because I'm only Well, it's only five minutes, but we could take about, I guess, so so there's Madam three President, you want to give a few more? Yeah. Actually, I'm kidding. I'll we'll, 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 give you like time, much. because you know what? I think this is so important for this being the first trip and to encourage future trips to happen. So we get one right. plan. There you go. So there are three of our kids at the Capitol Lion Museum. Um, and we just if, if you don't know, we just returned about two weeks ago, kind of days ago, something like that. Um, we took 16 kids, and I think it was a phenomenal experience for all of us. We all made it home safe and sound and in one piece, and we're thrilled to share it with you. So go ahead. Um, that was our whole travel group with our, our tour director there um, on our last day of travel. So they're all a little, little weary there, but they look good. Yeah, they look good. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, I wake up call that day. So. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, that was good. But that kind of gives you an idea. We had 16. Um, most of them really wanted to come tonight, but we had track and tennis and swimming and what else? Softball. So swimming is winter sports. Swimming is sports. So go ahead. So just kind of like a reminder of what we hear about when we pitch this in the beginning. Um, our educational objectives. We want to kind of go over um, the We Share, which is the platform that the kids are using to earn credit with their projects. Um, just an overview of our timeline and. All of those things are similar to the trip that we're proposing next, so it kind of gives you an idea of how it ran this time, but how we plan for it to run next time, hopefully, um, and our trip itself. Okay. No, go ahead. I'm going to just keep okay. uh, So educational objectives, um, uh, the big idea is just bringing subjects, people, places, and events to life, kind of aligning with school goals, promoting a cultural understanding, respect, language learning, citizenship, sharpening those 21st century skills, um, including communication and global confidence and just navigating new experiences. It, it, going into a new place that is foreign to you um, is an amazing growth opportunity for kids. Um, and then down there, you probably can't see it too well. Um, students have their individual learning targets as well. 
So they all chose a topic that they wanted to research and explore, and it was different for each student. So they had to research before departure, <coughs> Um, they had to document their experiences while they were there, and now they're in the process of kind of reflecting, drawing conclusions, putting it all together, and they have to present a big project. So there are a lot of uh, moving parts. Uh, this picture, let's go back to one second. This picture, although the focus is on Wyndham and learning how to use a, uh, a water fountain in Rome, but the actual uh, uh, focus should actually be behind them, which is a ruin that they're excavating right now, which is the uh, place where uh, Julius Caesar was killed. So, you know, a little bit of history around this. <laughs> Fun facts. Fun facts. Also a home for many street cats. Yeah. Yes. Street cats. Yes. Like hundreds. Like a lot. <laughs> Too many. Uh, so, I'll just breeze through our um, timeline. This would be the same timeline as a future trip. Um, prior, to dest or prior to departure, we learned about destinations as a group. They each developed a research question. Um, they gathered information. They shared that information with each other. Here. Um, and with kind of help from um, Eli, Jody, and I kind of crafted the direction, their research project, or their um, investigation question, rather. Um, obviously, on tour, conducting their investigation kind of on the ground, um, journaling, photographing, taking notes, um, interviewing. What? Eating. Lots of eating, lots yeah. of you know, field testing of things. <laughs> uh, and now, you know, they're home, they're processing right now, but they have to analyze their information, reflect on their experiences, draw conclusions, um, and then they have to present and publish some kind of final product that they need to share publicly and post to the WeShare platform. Um, that work isn't assessed by us, we kind of help guide them and give them feedback, but ultimately it's assessed by WeShare and that's who awards the credit. And that's an accredited institution. Good. So um, they have to kind of choose a role. It's just sort of a kind of a push to help them kind of think about what they want to investigate and how. And uh, then their question had to be kind of globally minded, not a yes or no question. Something they can research before they leave, but that they can't really answer until they get there. Um, that they have to experience for themselves and they kind of reflect on um, in order to really answer. So good. Oh, wait, wait, what was the clip? Oh, and there's Keegan there in front of the uh, Fountain of Four Rivers um, in uh, Navona Square. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to kind of skim over these. We shared them publicly on the school Facebook page, but it just kind of is a reminder of the variety and depth of questions that the students were asking. Go ahead. And yeah, there's more. And we have another page. Yeah. 16. Yep, 16. Um, and so here are just a couple of like fun highlight pictures. So if you have any uh, commentary, kids, or teachers, uh, hog it, but that's us in front of the Coliseum. <laughs> and uh, Trevi Fountain, the Pantheon. How much of the Coliseum can you get into? All of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you can't get down below. But go ahead. <clears throat> so, yeah. They Was take it? they take you around like around each level, and there are private tours. We can go below and above, even higher. But we just took the standard. Middle ring. And we still got to see the bottom though. We had a great view. Yeah. Like, we got to see a lot. So <laughs> yeah. They removed the actual like place where the gladiators fought. Yeah. You can see what was going on below that. Yeah. And because we had an actual like tour guide tour guide, we we got like history while we were there. So even if you didn't specifically research the Coliseum, which nobody I think did, <laughs> like we got to learn about like why everything was the way it was, how it used to look. Um, what happened there through the ages? We learned a lot about um, recycling there too, which was pretty awesome. This but because the marble from it was Dan yeah, and yeah, used in like Bernini's sculptures. Yeah. yeah, we saw a lot of uh, Colosseum marble in the Vatican. The Trevi Fountain. Really interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Trevi Fountain that Bernini. Yeah, Bernini. Bernini made that out of the Jacob. marble that used to cover the entirety of the Colosseum. <laughs> <laughs> More Coliseum, as it's cracking the Da Vinci Code down there. <laughs> into a, a great Leonardo it's right uh, there. exhibit. Yeah. yeah, the Mona Lisa is really small. <laughs> that is a fact. Smaller than you expand, is it? Yeah, yeah. That's about the it. size of that post. Yeah, oh, it's maybe. Yeah. It's, it's even smaller than smaller that. Than yeah. that. Yeah. It was it's much like bigger than I expected. The actual thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a clipboard. Maybe that poster and getting the frame. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we were shocked. 
We let you handle it. Is it Notre Dame? Some of us are family members. Other of us work for cats. I'm like, I don't think that's what the Catholic Church had in mind. Annie. I said, we lit candles for our loved ones, and some of us lit candles for cats. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's your memory. It's my memory. It is. I am disappointed in myself. It's incredible. There's the gelato. Like one picture we were is like a model picture there. Um, like gelato. It's like a gelato. The views. Gelato for days. Lots of steps. There were lots of steps. Lots of steps. Lots of walking, steps. lots of steps. Ten miles but but it was over. totally worth it. Every step. Keegan's like on the edge. Yeah. No complaining. Of course, I was whatsoever. No, that's not true. Every step. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. Rain? Wow. I mean, so Rome was great weather. We walked about eight to nine miles yeah. a day over like pretty, not like mountain climbing, but it was uneven was cobblestones. Yeah, we were still. we were hustling, um, but it was beautiful. And then when we got to Paris, it rained and was freezing cold, and we were hustling long distances. I was fine. But it, it, we, <laughs> we loved it. We had an amazing time. As and I just. We just loved it. We yeah. still enjoyed it. Because, you know, it's raining, but it's raining in Paris. Paris. So. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You just have to think of it that way. Yeah. 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 We had an amazing yeah. time. Like, it was so yeah. great. That's yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. so yeah. much. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. great. Yeah. 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 They did every day. They had a great. They weren't complainers. They, I mean, this complaining gets you nowhere. It's got to be positive. Positive in Paris. That picture taken on the stairs, that was a little risky for me, Eli. Oh, yeah. Eli, that was a failing thing. Eli almost got himself killed. I'm like, frail. I, I almost forgot about that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. okay, so the road on the left <laughs> behind Miles leads to the Spanish Steps. Which one? The road to, in the middle leads to the uh, to the wedding cake, which is the, uh, the temple that was built in the ancient Roman tradition, but to represent the unification of Italy. And it was built at the same time as our Civil War, which is kind of oh, okay. an, an interesting uh, thing to notice. It's also and, my friend. Uh, uh, <laughs> the road on the far right, which isn't in the picture, picture goes right. to the Colosseum. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. if you have questions for our kids, we're, I'm, we're kind of blocking them. Yeah, I, was just, I was curious if anybody's question was difficult to follow up on for any reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, how so did that word. play out? Miles couldn't find any garbage. Yeah, that until, Paris. Until, until Paris. Paris. Until Paris. Oh, there was nothing yeah. to oh. Miles. He was like, oh. why don't you guys just Paris is share really your understand. Understand. Vegan, okay. 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 Very well. nice. Actually, that can get thrown out of the country, I think. Yeah. That's <laughs> you don't eat food? Okay. Yeah. Is that your topic? Yes, yeah, so what was your topic? Well, my topic was music, and so I focused on busking in Rome and in Paris, and I was not expecting to see much, but there was music everywhere on the Spanish stuff. There was everywhere. Like, everywhere I turned, there was someone playing the violin or playing the guitar. It was amazing. I was not expecting that. So I have a lot of good footage. Tell about the metro. Oh yeah, there was like, a band that walked in the metro playing yeah, there. It was perfect. A jazz, I don't know. Band. A jazz, jazz band. band. It wasn't just a band. It was a jazz band. So that was really exciting. And I'm, do they get to see my video of the final yeah. thing? Or is that? Yeah, we'll invite. Yeah, yeah, we're invited. We're invited. Yeah, we'll hope you come and see the great music that I found. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Are we all going? Well, why not? Okay. They gave us another five minutes. All right. Well, <laughs> we're dying to know. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, my project was on religious symbolism, and although I'm not a very religious person, I knew that I was going to these two huge religious like cities, and they were like so historical and history basically revolves around religion. I think that's so interesting. And so I, I kind of, before the trip, I didn't know much because I didn't research enough, but I'm learning. I learned, I learned that. And then when I was there, I, I just learned so much. It was like, it was almost better that I went there not really knowing much because like I got like so, I got to ask questions and I got to see things for the first time in a way that I've never seen it before, which is really awesome. And you did finish the division before you left. Oh yeah, I did finish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I did it. Do you guys want to say that? My topic was fountains. Um, so of course Rome is the city of fountains. So it was really amazing to be able to research these amazing historic fountains at home and then go and actually see them. I just it was awesome. And what was your line, Greta? Remember our first lunch? Yeah. We weren't supposed to go up, sit down, but somehow. 
group of girls and I went to a nice Italian little restaurant and sat down. And what was the line that we used the whole week? Like, I'm going to cry. It was so beautiful. I'm going to cry. I feel like I'm going to cry. And then two seconds later, Olivia's eating her food and she's like, this is so good. I think I'm going to cry. And that was the line all week. Some of us shed a few tears when we looked at amazing things. Yeah. Give goosebumps walking in the Vatican. So my topic was the religious experience and like I do go to church, but like going to Notre Dame and just seeing like the ancient religious places was really amazing because like lighting the candles, I've never experienced something like that and it's definitely like something that I had a religious experience and take on. Um, <clears throat> my project was on stained glass and you know how the stories connect and um, we differ and you see the pictures online of all the stained glass windows and it's nothing like the real thing, you go in there and you just lose your breath. Um, we were walking up into the stairs of um, St. Chapelle, which it, it's a spiral staircase, and um, you're, you're expecting really cool windows, but then you actually get up there and you, you just lose your breath because you're surrounded by all these colors and light, and it's, it's beautiful. Nice. You can project from there if you don't want to get up. All right. So, um, so my project choice was um, studying the, how the film represents their society in, in Europe. And it, there's a lot of Western material, but there's also a very good amount of their material being advertised. And there are these massive theater complexes that show all these different kinds of film. And, and they, uh, when I interviewed people about it, they said that they're very they're very pleased with Western film that like represents their society, like the Angels and Demons and the Da Vinci Code and Roman Holiday, and they just like it. They just like it when the place where they live is represented on screen. I think Winder probably did the most interviewing. Yeah. We did the most. Which is shocking. shocking. <laughs> 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 Somehow, everyone just jumped in. Um, so I did public transportation, which is something we very much lack in America compared to there. I must say, it's a scary, large difference. Um, there, they had these huge train stations. Um, I, they had, in just a little section, at least 12 lines in what looked like maybe an eighth of the total station. And that's just one, and we saw like six. So, um, they also have Metros everywhere, which are subways, um, much nicer than ours, I must add. They had cushioned seats. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, there were buses. Uh, there were... Night in train. Night trains, yes, that too. They actually use trains there. Um, trains are still relevant. But... And the parking. Parking, is amazing. yeah. It, this is the non-James Brown night train. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, we might have saying. Night train. It's not night train when we're there. But then in the last day in Rome, I saw like a little extravagantly colored smart car parked over in the corner beside our bus as we were getting ready to leave for the airport. And I read it briefly, and it was basically the loan a bike program except with hybrid smart cars, mm -hmm. which was really cool. Um, there were also a lot more like Vespas and that sort of thing, many more two-wheeled instruments of getting to point A to point B. And yeah, it's much more extensive there. And then the experience, right? Our metro experiences. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, not quite as bad as New York. But it was pretty funny when Miss Chick pushed Olivia, who was... Michael. Yeah. Into a metro, which was pretty much overflowing, and then the doors slammed behind her, and they shot off. And then the eyes. Everyone Mother of child left behind. <laughs> Mother of the year right here. Like, actually, I think this group is the group that got left behind oh. after that train. <laughs> we, we chose not to. Play. Yeah, we were really like, no, let's just wait. There was no, there was no, no, no wait. No wait for us. Okay. Any okay. other questions for these guys? I know we're over our time. Well, okay. well, yeah, let's... That one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the next thing. Holy oh, no. smokes, are you serious? So, um... <laughs> uh, so, not tonight. Uh,
So we're, we're looking at our next trip already, um, and I know it's a little soon. Our lap, Mr. Basora started talking to us um, in EF in 2014, so it was two years before we actually departed when we started looking at this. We opened the trip up for signups in winter of 2015, so about a year and a half before departure. And um, the monthly payments were pretty manageable um, for many families and for many other families, it was completely out of the question. So we would like to get this trip on the books two years out um, so we can maybe try to get the monthly payments down lower into uh, a price point that's a little bit more manageable for families. One of our goals you know, that we discussed with this trip is wouldn't it be nice if this opportunity were available to more of our kids? Yeah. So. Um, we're looking at a spring break of not this next year, but the year after, and uh, looking at maybe a different destination in Europe. And uh, one of the great opportunities they have um, with EF is service learning in different parts of the world. And uh, the one that we've been kind of looking at with some feedback from kids, tentative possible, is um, Lima Machu Picchu in the Sacred Valley service learning trip. Um, cost a similar range to what we uh, do with this trip, 3000 to about 3800 um, you can maybe shave off a little on the lower end, or you can go up way, way higher. Um, but we would prefer to keep it under four for sure. Um, and so that's what we like to share with you. And we have print handouts if anyone would like one. I have, a, I have the actual have document, too. But you have the actual document. Yeah. Do you want one of the little sure. sheet? I accidentally copied them on below because that's what was in the copy machine. Anyone else? I just have to say why they're passing that. Our, our kids were well prepared, well behaved. It was like an honor to be there with them. They, you know, they weren't. What was your saying? You're not a. You're not a tourist. You're a traveler. Traveler. I must have said it until they. I mean, they're all kind of rolling their eyes because I must have said it a thousand times. I think we. They were really well prepared, but they are were also just a phenomenal group of kids. Like we say, like they didn't complain. They also were just awesome. They listened, they followed directions, they were respectful, they, I can like gush about you guys for like, <laughs> 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 like they did a great job. <laughs> oh, um, you can get a I don't want to But they were our guinea pigs because when oh, I, yeah. another teacher and I both met initially about this, it, it turned out that he wasn't able to travel and Thank goodness Eli hopped right on board because I really wasn't comfortable going without a male chaperone as well because we have a, a mixed group of kids here. Um, but they were our guinea pigs to determine like is international travel something that is a good idea for our school? Um, is managing a group like this of teenagers going to be manageable like outside of the U.S. borders? And um, they they were amazing. They did great. They were such curious, passionate travelers. It was an amazing opportunity, and I had so much fun, and I learned so much, and I think everyone else did too, so I hope it continues for the future high school students. So, you know, they had a lot of preparation, and we really did try our best to wear them out every day. So <laughs> they were that, was, that was an added, added addition to, yeah. to behavior. Yeah. By the end of the trip, we couldn't walk anymore. Yeah, we actually, I felt a conference with our EF person about that yesterday, so I can address a few questions. So what's the, what's the timeline on, on the, the full circle of Leisha? Like when does it? No, they have they haven't submitted their projects yet. So they, we just got back. They had to process it all. They had to complete their project. They had to submit that to WeShare. Um, WeShare's deadline is before the end of the school year. Um, I'm gonna have them do this a little sooner so that they can get that, especially for our seniors, so that they can have that on their transcripts. I don't anticipate any. Problem. So by Monday. By Monday, no, they have a little bit more time. <laughs> Sunday, actually. There are yeah. 30 days yeah. of school yeah. after, so. Yeah, they have a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, so, this was a wide range of ages as well, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah. freshmen for seniors. Yeah, that's great. Well, one thing I want to sort of say is, so this all started with the big picture idea that I think we had in, in discussing, I think, with board members, too, this whole idea of uh, one of our, our visions, what we want our kids to be able to do is we want them to graduate and be the change leaders of the future, the global change leaders of the future. So a big piece of that is that that's what we really want. We've got to give our kids opportunities uh, to get out and see the world. And I'm just so uh, pleased with this trip. My understanding is the last time a trip like this was done was 1989 or something wow. like that. It was a class of 89 that went on a trip to Europe, I think. And uh, it's been that long. And so uh, it's so great to get back to this. And I think 
they set the pace, your group of uh, students, you all set the pace for this and you really set the expectation high and I think uh, really opened up some avenues for other kids to follow in your footsteps and so I really appreciate the work you all did and, and taking this very seriously and uh, putting the effort in and, and really, really doing this. I hope it was worth it to you and your parents and that sounds like it was. Uh, it was definitely, I'm glad we took this bold step all of us as a community in the district to do this, and, and I, I can't say enough about your teachers who uh, were fantastic through this process well, and uh, are great. Yeah, to, uh, I, I just wanted to publicly thank the three of you for taking this leap of faith because, right, hadn't been done a long time, and, and there was no reason to think it was going to work out so well. So thank you all for doing it. We that. had pretty we high couldn't have, We right? couldn't have done it without each other. The three of us, well, it was like whoever's strength was someone's weakness, and yeah, it, it was great. a great team of <laughs> teachers to work we with. Think that there was, was never <laughs> like a doubt in anything. There was never any. Sorry, I was on it. Well, it's still Problem a hard or whatsoever. Yeah, but, but thank you. Thank you for doing this. Go ahead. Yes, um, I was just going to tag on to that and say, um, I mean, as a parent of one of the kids on the trip, initially all you knew was who were the teachers. And so that, um, that made it a really uh, easy decision to, you know, kind of jump in and then try to be ready in time for something that seemed so far off, but then really it came pretty quickly. But, um, and so the really the teacher piece was, it's all you know in the beginning, and that was just wonderful. And, um, and then the first meeting after people had signed up, where you looked around and then you saw who else had signed up, that was also a wonderful um, thing too. So it was just, it was great. But really in the beginning all you knew is the teachers, and so I felt so good about the teachers in charge of this, and that's why we were willing to it engage. It wasn't really going to happen. <laughs> well, it says you can get arrested. That's it. That was a plus. That was our goal. Happens we had scared orders. That was such a terrible thing. You said it was a terrible thing. I thought it was a terrible thing. Okay. 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 I just want to add one more thing, uh, and that is that when we first talked about this trip, we really wanted a, a great trip. It was a safe trip, one that we felt like we could really do well with, and this was, I think, the, the choice. It was a great choice. But in the long run, one of the things, one of the reasons we felt like this was important was to be able to do some really, uh, make some major contributions to Society 2 on this trip. And, and we feel like a service learning trip uh, ultimately was something we feel like we really wanted to get to, and that's, this, so this next trip, is shooting big for us, I think, and it's uh, it's a it's a really big deal, and so our kids can go out and really uh, make their mark um, beyond Yellow Springs and and learn about cultures and, and do some of the work they did on this trip. But um, this this service learning idea is, is really powerful, and it's a great example of doing some authentic work um, in in the world. What is the um the service work. Good question. So on the back, there's a sample, but the sample isn't necessarily what Thank you. what they'll need you in two years. Yeah. So um, I talked. I, I was familiar with our service learning, but I wanted to talk with our EF person, our expert guy. Uh, I spoke with him earlier this week just to get a few more details. Um, and that's just a sample itinerary. This isn't necessarily what we would do. Um, what we would end up doing is working with EF and they would kind of base the service around the interests of our students and what they're really interested in, as well as the needs of the community. So they can't say two years in advance, like, sure. you're going to go to school, because that community might not need a school. They might need a road, or they might need um, whatever. Yeah, they might need a garden. So, um, okay. it, and they have a variety of service, what they call kind of like more soft service, where you might be working with people. Like they have one where they're working with kids um, in an orphanage, basically like reading um, and socializing and just you know meeting them. Um, and then one where there's like more hands-on kind of like building stuff. Um, so that is kind of dependent on us and the, the needs. Um, this example here is just one of three different service learning tours in Peru that also has Machu Picchu and um, a few other major destinations on it. But ultimately, we would work with them. And we're interested in what our students are also interested in as well. So would they be able to use that as their service project for graduation? Their I, service? I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> High school principal. <laughs> 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 Time will tell. We ran out of tape. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Yes. Um, I have a question. Okay. This is the first time this has come to any kind of thing, so I, I think it would probably depend on 
They're all on the table. Yeah. Well, I need, I mean, okay. you can't do better than this, so motion to adjourn. <laughs> 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 well, it's so pretty. Yeah, they've <laughs> injected the energy for us to get through the business portion <laughs> of yeah. our meeting. Can we sit still, still everybody. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> all right, no, I appreciate that, believe me. All right, well, thank you. Thank all you all very much. Talk to you. all 16 days because, you know, about their projects, their favorite moments, you know, everything that, you know, I'm interested to hear from them about what impacts them a month later, a year later. So, Elizabeth, when we have a date for the project presentation, we'll exhibition night? Oh, it's going to be exhibition night. <coughs> Great, okay. Oh, no, oh, I'm sorry. It's the Thursday before the high school exhibition night. It's on the high school calendar already. Yeah. Great, it's called okay. International Global Connections International Dinner. Is it the 12th? It is the 12th of May. Do I have to fix something now? Yeah. yeah. That's the same. I said board meetings. It is the same. Yes. Board meetings. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm going to find you right now. I'm so you know, already know. There aren't really that many open dates left in our school calendar. I'm just... What time is it? Yeah. Six o'clock. Okay, so we can have the board meeting over there in theory. Get a snack on the way. Or you can have us make your board at 7.30 and see that from 6 to 7.30. Or we can have the board meeting at 4. We don't have to do anything at the board meeting at the end of the year. Yeah, it was fun. I'm good. Thank you. I want to hear about those last I'm really... I'm going to ask you a blue paper. I made plenty. Oh All right, we're going to move on here. We are moving into 2.4 the administrative course. Uh, I'll go ahead and start. Hill Springs High School, McKinney Middle School. Hold on. Yeah. Is this, in, this is a kind of a transition. You'll see uh, a photo of, of those, uh, <laughs> those young folks. Uh, you know, it's always, you know, you get to see them smiling and everything, and, and here they are, and it was really remarkable to kind of see their level of community and friendship and bonding. They, they, so, they spoke so easily amongst each other, and finished each other's sentences, and, and, uh, and that's really a special thing. But this is, this is, uh, after, I suppose after 40 hours, it, it came off Facebook. Um, but, uh, you know, we have now, there are three trips this year that students would have taken um, outside of, of, of Ohio. And so, um, of course, Italy and France that you just heard about. Um, we also got back um, from Chicago, uh, Northern Illinois University. If you scroll down a little bit, there's some um, photos of, it's the only steel pan, um, as Brian Mayer mentioned last month, the only steel pan undergraduate and graduate degree. So, I, um, so the director of the program is on the right picture behind David Walker on those big base steel pans with his arm in the air. But I don't know if you can see over here on the left picture, but it's it's kind of the grandfather of steel pan, the, sort of the guy who invented it, you know, in and, and these slums and developed it, and and, uh, and it's just really remarkable. And so um, I wanted to include a video of, it was about a two and a half hour workshop, and so as kids learned and learned the rhythms behind it and, and how to play them, they actually created this this medley that, that was just, I mean, they were playing steel pan. It was really, really gorgeous. So, um, so it was a wonderful trip. I guess when we think about our kids, um, we had a server our first night, first breakfast, and uh, she said she's been a server for 26 years. The tips was art were already included, so it was all part of it. She said, "I've never, never worked with a nicer group of kids, polite, um, engaged, um, as as this group in my 26 years of being a server." So. This is, this is what you hear, and this is not the first time I've shared this, whether it's seniors in Atlanta, or where hotel people are calling us and saying what a wonderful group of people. These kids, when they go out, they represent themselves in ways that are really remarkable. Um, next month, about two weeks from now, uh, the eighth graders will be going to Washington, D.C. Um, as you know, we kind of did a sort of no child left behind um, aspect to it, and I think probably the highest percentage of kids on a trip within of those, the group that's eligible, um, it's four, it's 44 of 49 kids. Wow. Right? Um, That's fantastic. A lot of fundraising, a lot of uh, the teachers are involved in it, and so, I mean, that's really, that's, that's really spectacular. Um, 
So, you know, we still would like to figure out ways to make sure that every, every kid can come, but Human Relations Council did a lot of scholarships uh, for kids to soften, uh, soften the cost a little bit. Um, ample fundraising, selfies with elfies. Um, so we didn't sell a lot of, you know, sort of dumb things that nobody wants that are overpriced. Thank you. Uh, we tried, <laughs> right? So, um, so, you know, we're really getting there. And it's, and it's your encouragement to, to learn well beyond the brick and mortar. It's really powerful PBL for the DC trip that I'll let them explain and show you what they come up with as well. We'll be as, you know, as impressed as you probably were with these teams. Great. All That's right. it for now. Thank you. Mm. All right. Who is next? It's me, I think. Um, I'm trying to remember what's on there. Uh, we had some some recent things that, that finished up. We had the uh, annual Starbase uh, trip for fifth graders. That's a five-day program that's uh, sponsored by the uh, Ray Patterson Air Force Base. Uh, lots of kind of one-day STEM-related projects, rocketry and, and CAD and different things like that. And, uh, it's a, it's a great program. It's, uh, it supports you know, the kind of learning that we like to do, and the kids love it. Um, and then we also finished our health education program for sixth graders, um, which uh, I think the kids, I don't know if they loved it, but they, uh, they learned a lot, and I think it's, uh, it was important learning for them, and that went pretty well. I um, have a picture there from our Peace Week. We shut down the streets in uh, Yellow Springs uh, uh, a few weeks ago, and. Uh, it was awesome. There were all these shots of just kids all the way down uh, the media, um, stretched as far as the eye can see, and, and, the, and the, the police force helped us block up the streets. And uh, you know that was like one of the big uh, events that we did during that week. But uh, it was an ongoing piece of you know Project Peace and what we we do to try to teach kids to uh, to get along, to resolve conflict, to be peacemakers. Um, and that's uh, totally planned by the specialists, so they did a really good job of, of bringing that together this year. And then uh, something that's really big for us is um, we've been doing a lot of work on scheduling, and um, there was a committee of teachers that uh, focused on trying to figure out how we could uh, create a schedule that brings um, more planning time, consistent planning time, uh, kind of looking at equity across the district. We were, uh, you know, kind of really wanted to have a zero period that you know that the middle school and high school has um, where they can really focus on professional development have this you know sacred time to do those kinds of things um, and then also the shared time that's significant enough for teachers to be able to sit down at a table and and you know <coughs> plan a project go forward on on, on a project um, really figure out how they can work together well um, with, with the right amount of time so uh, excited about the schedule and um, be happy to answer any questions about that, um, but the committee did a good, good job and the staff is excited and um, I think we're going to have some really great, great things have, uh, come from this kind of schedule next year. I don't know what question to ask a single answer. So in terms of structuring a uh, schedule change is so, so <coughs> dramatic. How, how, uh, how, how does that work? I mean, is there anything that's going to change considerably, I guess, that um, can, can parents you, would feel the impact of or right. kids would feel the impact of? Or? Can you talk about the difference between how it's been done before and then this year? I think that'd be a good way to kind of start it off. And also, yeah, it's a, how we've scheduled yeah. or what the, the process which which the schedule was made versus... Uh, well, I, I think that part of the process was, you know, we were trying to respond to, to needs. Mm -hmm. uh, people were saying, uh, overwhelmingly, we need more time. We need more time together. Um, you know, we have, in general, the schedule focuses on trying to keep, um, you know, first grade having specials at a similar time during the day, but it's certainly not something where you can always um, give them 60 minutes a day like, you know, this schedule does. Um, sometimes there are these, you know, gaps where, like, you know, a teacher's planning here and the other first grade teacher's planning time is here, so it just doesn't align. Um, so we were responding to that, the need for more time, the need for consistency, and uh, we were looking at these are our needs. How do we how do we get that done? You know, rather than this is what we have, we're going to do the best we can. Mm -hmm. So with the needs in mind, we we found some uh, potential solutions, uh, extending uh, Joe Franny's time, <clears throat> pushing her to full time would allow us to be able to accomplish the schedule. Looking at uh, John Dudgel's time a little bit differently, looking at our uh, 
ILE program differently and really putting more pieces, uh, scheduling more pieces in um, rather than, you know, kind of letting those programs uh, run a little bit differently. Um, you know, like currently uh, Carol Culbertson will do like a project, more of a concentrated project with a grade level for a period of weeks, but this is kind of looking at um, how do we have her seeing those kids every week. Um, also asking for a little bit more of Eli's time um, over here in our building. So through those things, I think we were pretty um, <coughs> economical about it. We didn't, we didn't really ask for, we didn't want to ask for something big, <coughs> three new teachers. We wanted to really see if we could, uh, you know, be budget conscious with this, but, uh, but give us what we needed. So that was kind of the process. So. And he had a committee that worked pretty hard on this too. Yeah. Yeah, that was an important piece. It's really a, a teacher committee that worked with him closely on it. Um, we had about eight, eight or nine teachers. We met several, four or five times to kind of hammer it out. So. He made the schedule for the whole building, whereas I mean, before a lot of times the teachers would work in teams to create their schedules, each team, and then trying to figure out a way to work that into a special schedule was really difficult and helped it hurt a little bit of the consistency, I think. And mm -hmm. so having one big schedule for the whole building with this team makes a huge difference. And I think that's kind of how they came up with this idea, which is pretty, pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Good. All right. Anybody else? <coughs> okay. Moving on to the uh, Jason. I don't know what's going on, huh? The treasure is really Nobody's touching anything. Nobody's touching anything? Nobody's touching anything? Well, he, he's something's like touching me something. Right. But I don't know what it is now. Sorry, guys. All right, well, Trevor's report. <laughs> okay, well, for you, we're going to send very short. Uh, we did receive our final real estate tax settlement, and for the fiscal year, um, we came in about $52,000 higher than what I had projected, which was <coughs> always good news, but that was on the good side. So it's uh, only 1.2% more than what I had initially projected, but um, at least it's not 1.2.8% less, so I'm happy about that. Um, what it looks like when we're three quarters of the way through the year, I can um, have a pretty good idea of where we're going to end up, and it looks like uh, several of our revenue items are going to be to the good, and they will come in higher than what I had projected, and then our expenditures look like they're going to come in uh, less. So we've been under budget consistently almost every year, um, so that's a good thing, and um, I'm, I feel good about where we're going to end up so at the end of the year. Uh, we have two funds that are really running in the red right now, which are our usual, is our lunchroom and our athletics. Um, athletics, uh, we just, they were doing pretty good until we just had to pay um, a couple big bills, like we, we used the pool at the wellness center and the tennis courts, and those are kind of big expense to use um, for those other facilities, so we just had to pay for those, so that's why that fund's in the red like it is right now. Spring is not a big revenue month for athletics, so it, we probably won't get in much more money. But um, we're probably going to be looking at, I don't know, maybe eight to $10,000 that we're going to have to take from the general fund for the athletic fund. So I'll report on that more in May as I have a better idea, but um, we'll have to come to you in June and ask permission to do that. And our lunchroom, we've been running behind on our federal reimbursements because they changed the system at ODE of how we um, <coughs> put in our monthly month end reports and that's that's how we get our federal lunchroom reimbursement and our state lunchroom reimbursement and uh, the system is new and it's got some work so we're, we're running behind on that but I think our lunchroom is going to do uh, pretty good this year it, it's it's certainly done better these past couple of years and I feel really good about it um, we, we really like our supervisor that we share with Franklin um, things seem to be going really well in the lunchroom so um, Hopefully we won't lose that much money this year, but that's another thing I'm keeping an eye on, and I'll get with you more in May and June to see what we'll have to transfer to the general fund. Um, you have on the agenda is the amounts of race resolution. That comes directly from the county auditor. We approve that once a year, just basically to say uh, what millage rates need to be put on the tax, or put on the tax bills so that we can collect the amount of money that we need. That's all the amounts and rates are going to go through once and sometimes twice a year because they reset the bond rate in December for the next calendar year, so we usually do it in December. But and that concludes my reports. Unless anybody has any questions. Thank you. A model of efficiency. 
So, um, thanks, Don. Mm -hmm. So, 3.2 is the acceptance of amounts and rates. It is recommended that the resolution accept the, the amounts and rates as to show Great. Second. Second. Anybody have any questions uh, about that? Any further questions? All right, roll call. Steve? Yes. Evan? Yes. Aida? Yes. Sylvia? Yes. All right. You know, I, I just, I'm sorry, uh, you walked in late, and w do you want to address the board, or are you just no, here I'm to just, observe? Yes. Okay, great, great. Thanks. I meant to say something soon. I wait. Just... Okay, um, we are moving on to uh, superintendent's report and recommendations, 4.1. Okay, a lot on here, but um, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to take one of them out because it was already discussed earlier, so this saves a little bit of time. Um, so 4.1a coaches training in Nashville. So we just went to Nashville, uh, left Wednesday after school, uh, came back on Saturday evening, and essentially with the five coaches, Matt and myself, we went down to Team State back and you know, held the report down, if you will. And um, we, uh, we had a, it was a great time. I think coaches administrative, we went. Um, we had an intensive 201 by BIE workshop, basically, which was um, for more advanced PBL schools and, and teachers, as well as um, coaches. And so it was a really great opportunity. We thought we were, we were excited to see that the content was uh, really high level, and it helped us get into a really nuanced discussion about projects and um, gave us a lot of a lot of ideas and, and things we can do differently. Um, as we go forward next school year. So it was really provided a lot of uh, ideas for professional development moving forward for teachers as we go into next school year um, from all kinds of things, assessments, uh, you know, how we, uh, our culture a little bit, there's a lot of different things we worked on. <coughs> this was 100% paid for through private funds, funds from the Yellow Springs Public Schools Fund. Uh, I want to make sure I, I say that. And um, it was just a chance for us to get a deeper dive into PBL concepts and then bring those ideas back to share with our teachers and, and our coaching practice. Let's see who's moving. <laughs> Something happened there. Okay, all right. Um, I think if we could have brought every teacher we had, we would love to have done that. Unfortunately, you know, with resources, it's best to really work with our coaches on this and then hopefully we would take what we learn and bring it back to the building. Um, negotiations. So we are negotiating with teachers in May and then pretty quickly after that we negotiate uh, with our support staff union. Um, so we'll be using the IBB process, as I think all of you know, but I think it's important for the community here, which is interest-based bargaining. It's a uh, process that is, is generally, I think, a, a better process for to promote teamwork and collaboration and uh, really goodwill. Um, we essentially present as one team as opposed to two teams uh, as adversaries against one another. And so our hope is that that will be a a good process that really yields uh, positive results for, for both teams. And we, our hope is that we can find a way to you know, support our staff and our teachers while being good stewards of the community resources as well. And so it's a, it's a difficult challenge and balance, I think, for us in our role uh, as negotiations team members, but that's, that's our goal to do. Um, next, I want to talk about, so I'm going to skip scheduling because I think Matt talked a little bit about it. Uh, but what I would say is the changes you'll see later in the agenda around um, the RIF and Joe Franey, I think, help uh, to, to be able to make that schedule happen with 60 minutes of planning time uh, for every teacher at Mills Lawn every day, which is a huge, uh, a huge increase for us and really should provide opportunity for more teamwork and, and for uh, teachers to work together at, at a very uh, minimal expense in the end after, after, we, uh, after next month. Um, report card. So I was asked to talk a little bit about the report card because I think uh, there were some questions about you know, the district might talk about the report card results, so where are we with this? And so I thought I'd share just a little bit about it. Uh, we got our results a couple months ago, <clears throat> and the results came in nine months after students completed their tests. So we got results nine months later. It's really not helpful to make improvements at, in student learning uh, at that point in the game, nine months after we get the results. So it's important to note that there was a complete change in the rigor of the test from last year from the year before, I should say, the last year. Right. Uh, there was a complete change in the standards being measured. Uh, there was a complete change in the test manufacturers. Actually, there were two this time. Uh, there was actually three. <laughs> there was a complete change in the scoring system.
uh, and the same letter grade representation to parents as previously. So you had all these changes, but yet we represented uh, the final result in the same letter grade format that parents received before. Um, with so much change, it's impossible, I think disingenuous and unethical to make apples and apples, to apples comparison with that data. And so it's really a dangerous thing for people to pay so much attention at all, frankly, to a report card that um, I think is deceiving and uh, presents a message of uh, an apples apples comparison which is nothing near apples to apples. It's, it's far apart, much more far apart than that. Uh, with the Department of Education keeping the letter grade system in place, it sends a message, like I said earlier. Uh, you know, in fact, it's, it's more like comparing apples to, to like peanut butter, you know, really. Uh, because it's, you know, it, they, they taste good together, but really they're totally different things, you know, I, I just don't, um, uh, you know, test difficulty varies widely among grade levels and subjects. <clears throat> so take examples, so one of the other questions people said is, well, look at the high school scores and middle school scores versus the elementary, or the high school scores versus the elementary. Those high school students must be doing so much better than the elementary school, the teaching must be better, the administering must be better, they must be doing something different at the elementary school, <laughs> at, the high school at, the elementary, at the high school to do so much better than the elementary school. And that's the danger in this, because people see those comparisons and make conclusions from it. But the reality is that the eighth grade reading statewide average passing rate on this last test, so you took it the statewide averages on all these tests, you would think that these tests were norm reference for the kids and they were, they were targeting at the level the kids needed at that grade level and they were at the same level needed for 10th graders as 8th graders, they would be, the, the passing rates would be about the same across the state in each test, right? Especially if we're going to compare across grade levels. It should be roughly around the same. So in 8th grade reading statewide passage rate was 68.3%. The 10th to grade reading average statewide passage rate was 93.2%. <laughs> So kids must get a lot grade. smarter in 10th grade, you know, from 8th grade to 10th grade. Uh, in 5th grade science, the statewide passage rate was 60.3%. The 10th grade science statewide passage rate was 74.8%. In 6th grade social studies, this, this is going to be a good one, this, the statewide passage rate was 57.5% on this test. The 10th grade passage rate on the OGT for social studies was 81.5%. In 10th grade math, this is the best one, I think, actually, 82.2% of 10th graders passed the math test. In 8th grade, 53.7% of kids passed the math test statewide. So there's a 29 point difference between 8th and 10th graders, a percentage point difference on a math test that's supposed to be at similar levels of difficulty by grade. Uh, we must be doing something to our kids statewide uh, to get them really smarter by the time they get to 10th grade. Either that's the case, or the cynic in me says, Maybe we have higher passage rates in high school because we're making the test easier so the kids can graduate on time and uh, move on after high school. Mm. I mean, maybe it's just me. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. No offense, but that's the... Uh, that's leadership. <laughs> I think there's probably something to that. And so uh, I can tell, assure you that our teachers at Mills Law School are just as good as our teachers at the middle school and high school. And uh, unfortunately, the people who would just blindly see the results of these assessments or take it at face value, would not see the clear problem and the danger in these test scores and what they show uh, comparatively. So the best we could do is compare ourselves to similar or districts statewide across the state and how we did. And so we kind of tried to measure ourselves that way based on these results. We did very well when you consider that um, comparison. So I think it's dangerous to do that, to make those comparisons any other way. Um, you know, further, in addition, tests measure rote memorization and promote teaching the test over deeper learning and soft skills. Um, given our trek with PBL, we were definitely concerned about the results on these tests, obviously. Um, but despite it, we were the highest scoring school district in Greene County for the first time in our history on these tests. I say that uh, with mixed emotions. <laughs> It's nice to be the best, but uh, you know, on a test that doesn't uh, necessarily measure what we want. Yeah, so we, so we did pretty well on these tests. So if you looked at the, the scores based on grades, and you gave to GPA based on grades, our GPA was higher than anybody else's. And so we had the best scores of anybody in the county and the best we've ever done relative to other districts. Uh, for normally, we're about third or fourth place, you know, right behind Bellbrook, Beaver Creek, um, Cedar Cliff, we kind of battled with them for third and fourth. And, but this time, we jumped over all of them and uh, did the best of, of every district around. Um, so it's a good sign. Um, but, you know, we did well on the system, but it's still a highly flawed system. 
And uh, so that's why we've chosen not to focus on our results, be they good or bad ultimately, because they don't, I think there's a danger in doing that, and that they don't, you can chase a number that uh, really doesn't accurately show the work we've done with our kids. And so that's... So can I just ask, please, Mario, uh, have you gotten any response from parents about any of these test results, or do our parents also feel similarly that... My, my hunch is that our parents feel similarly, and the reason I say that is I have not gotten a single parent calling me complaining yeah, okay. at all about our test results or say anything one way or the other. However, the day the test results came back, I did get a call from a parent that week and then one the week before, well, not the week before, but a parent that week saying that she was concerned about playground time at the elementary school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So uh, clearly recess is important to us for our parents and you know, I think parents understand you know, what's, what learning is yeah. all about and, and uh, that our kids can learn just as much at recess <laughs> <laughs> right. as they're learning, taking a test, or doing a pure academic work. And so I think that's, those are important points to consider and think about. So our community is pretty, pretty smart with this. They understand it. I think they get it. Um, but it doesn't help the issue of the report card having an impact on property values mm -hmm. and people wanting to move into the community. Ultimately, that definitely has an impact on property values. And, you know. So can I ask a follow-up to that? Um, <coughs> You, uh, do you anticipate that the next time we go through this, they're going to be? We're also going to wind up waiting nine months, and we're yes. also going to wind up uh, with a new set of variables. There's going to be added variables, I think, this year, and so uh, we'll see where that goes. But I think, I, mean, I guess, I'm wondering if, if if there will ever be any consistent <laughs> day right. here to, uh, to compare, or is it always going to be soon enough? So this year we have. Seniors taking OGT still a little bit, I think. The kids who haven't passed it uh, in previous years. We have kids taking air tests only in reading and math for, for the first time. Last year they did park, air, right. and OGT, and OGT. Now we're doing air, because we dropped park, because that was, you know, bad. And uh, we, we're keeping air, and we're doing the, um, the OGT still for one more year, and then after that goes away, we'll be a strictly air state. So really, you still aren't comparing apples to apples for a few right. more years, and by that time, we'll probably have a new governor, and uh, <laughs> you know, things will change again, I'm sure. Um, so I, I, uh, I, I do still think there's some, some feelings of, of change coming. I think there's a lot of uh, efforts and interest. There's a, I think I talked a little bit about that Philanthropy Ohio group who's really interested in this work, and I've had some conversations with their executive director a little bit about we're trying to do in, in, in this work, and, and they're very interested in it. And the ILN is actually having a meeting uh, in a couple weeks here where we're going to get together and try to create um, a governing board to create to, to have superintendents and school leaders um, pushing an agenda with the ILN uh, because right now the ILN is essentially being led by the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. And so we feel like we need some of that sort of independence so that we can have a voice to go forward together. And I think out of that will come some real um, requests for waivers from state-specific assessments. And I think we'll, by then we'll know for sure what exactly the ESSA um, says and what it doesn't say. Yeah. Right? So there will be less interpretation around that uh, at that point. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, anybody else have anything? So I wanted to just say thank you, and you know, this came up and I encouraged Mario to say something about it because um, the news took it upon themselves to uh, write a, a great article about our report card and so forth, but it had never been discussed here, and I was approached and asked why that was, and there was some concern that maybe the board had um, made a dis an active decision, sort of, and not been transparent about that. I want to assure everybody we have never talked about this um, and, you know, maybe are bad on, a, on some level, um, but I think we've indirectly snubbed some of this information um, somewhat unintentionally, but also because none of us feel, I think none of us feel like it's showing what we want to show. So um, I just wanted us to do a report. We typically do say something about it. We hadn't said something about it, and I want to assure the public there was no discussion about this previously um, that wasn't public, um, and that's why I suggested Mario talk a little bit about it. So, okay. uh, so that's where that is. Okay. Um, so the next thing is the, the training center, which is under E. And the only thing I want to just kind of uh, let the board know is that so we're probably going to try to bring a 
a description of a new stipend um, to get potentially approved by the board next month. And these are the, if you remember, the two, stip the two stipends to support school visits. So that when people come to visit our schools next year, we're going to start charging. And uh, what will happen is we need two teachers that have the ability to help be the, the connector between um, those districts and our schools and then to hopefully plan visits and get kids to be able to start leading tours um, next school year around the building. So that's, that's our goal. And so we'll see, I'll give you more information over the next month on that so we're moving in that direction. Along the same lines, uh, there's been a real need, which is going to have to come up very quickly as well, probably next month we'll be talking about this again as well, which is a pay rates um, and, and changes for teachers and administrators that are presenting and planning presentations for other districts outside of the school day. So really interesting issue that we're coming up. It's a good thing, right? I mean, it's yeah. a good problem yeah. to have. But we want to make sure we're doing, we're being fair, but we're and equitable, and that we're we're actually making sure we're following the proper ethical, I mean, ethical procedures for the Ohio Ethics Commission, as well as financially for for Don's sake when she's doing her work, so that we're above board there and making sure everything's done right. So uh, there needs to be some intentional discussion and probably a board-approved uh, schedule of what we would pay people for hours work outside of the day and presenting outside of the day. And so I'm going to work on. I already have a draft of that. I'll put that together and I'll get you something there. Um, the same thing is for administrators including uh, me when, when, when those kinds of things happen, how do we work that out? Because this is probably going to be an increasingly uh, big challenge for us as we go forward. As um, I mean, I feel like there's lots of opportunities. I just had a meeting today where um, somebody's going to write, a, a district's going to write a straight, straight A grant with a major um, entity in Dayton that wants us to lead a, their project in terms of creating instructional videos around project-based learning that becomes online modules on a website. And so they want our teachers and our administrators to be a big part of that work and leading that effort for them. And so uh, pretty powerful work if we do it, but we got to make sure, and in exchange, there may be things such as um, makerspace support or other things that might help. So we're working, I'm not going to want to share the name of the organization because I think we want to keep them, their, their information private because I'm not sure they want us to share it. But that kind of thing, I think, is going to probably continue. And those are opportunities to get uh, funds in our teachers and our administrators' hands for the work that they do outside of the school day, outside of their job, to enjoy this effort. Um, but also then to su have some of those funds then go into that PDL budget to help support right. you know, this work going forward. So a lot of it's a very ser serious fundraising effort for us as well. So. Right. So, but we will get a chance to see and Absolutely. improve. Yeah. For instance, rates, exactly. right. schedules, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but okay. also, I mean, for instance, with this with this straight A grant opportunity, you know, how are we valuing what we're charging externally? Exactly. These are all. And that's you're asking some new great questions. New it's brand new territory, and so uh, you know, it's that's a good question. I mean, you know, I could probably use some support, you know, in terms of trying to do that. So I know, I know that you've had a lot of experience with these kinds of things. So maybe you know, we can talk or you know, other folks can. Or, or find another resource. I mean, right. um, regardless, the thing that's important that I just want to say to us as, as, a, as a team here is there's a difference between nonprofit to nonprofit and nonprofit to private sector. Right? There's <coughs> different ways to price things. Mm -hmm. There's value based versus cost based. These are all above board business practices, but, right. but certainly right. not that we're familiar with. So yeah. when we're doing this work, one way or the other, I want us to be clear on whether we are developing a cost-based model for how we price out things or whether we're putting together a value-based. Yeah, right. Meaning, a value-based model says that we understand what value the entity is gaining and what they're going to be able to, to accomplish because of this versus, well, it costs us a buck to do this, so we're going to charge a buck fifty. Right. That kind of thing. Yep, absolutely. I don't want to get too far in the weeds. I'm just saying that those are the kind of things that, yeah. one way or the other, we ought to have a resource to help guide, to help consult with you on, on, how, on how you put this and, together. And so now, you know, tag team, because uh, I'm not going to be supportive. I'm going to dump more okay. onto your lap about this. I think I've raised this, raised this once before. I think it is worth us being cognizant of and careful with the intellectual property issues here. Yeah. Who owns what? When we're talking about curriculum and and it's essentially content stuff, in addition to method and and so on and so forth, and this is a murky 
area now, right? So if, I, if we develop a curriculum, does the teacher own that? Does the school district own that? Does the board own it? If, if we're now going to share it with somebody else, who's going to get charged what for, I, I, you know, yeah, I think this is, this is worth So this is a huge, and I have to be honest with you, I mean, my, this is adding a ton of, a whole new scope of work to what we're doing, and we really don't have the, um, the personnel to be able to handle a lot of this, this kind of work. So we're in a position where we have the product. We got the goods, you know. We got everything that's needed to be able to sell and get out there and, and, and bring revenue to the district. Um, we have it. It's there. People are coming to us about it now. What we don't have is the financial capacity or the ability to work out the, the, the business agreements, the ability to really do a lot of the, the, the work that needs to be done. I mean, probably what we really need is a business manager, ultimately, to really help manage a lot of this workforce. We don't have that uh, right now on staff. And so it's a, it's a huge... It's a dilemma. It's a major challenge. Um, how do we how do we grow this without expanding our budget? That's a huge issue for us as a public entity right now. So I'm curious. There's a pro bono model here. It seems to me that, um, that, that like, I'm sorry. Well, for instance, through the U.S. Chamber, there's a program called SCORE. Yeah. Right, which are uh, senior level retired executives who make themselves available for small business. Right. But it's a completely private sector entity. So, not yeah. to say that they wouldn't. Either way, I think for the purposes of this report, my take is that we, at this point we might be getting too far in the weeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would certainly recommend and we would make myself available yeah. to yeah. So talk about this offline and figure out what next steps would be and how, how to proceed. Well, I mean, I mean, high tech high. Ought to be able to help us help. I mean, some way, somehow, direct us, help us, support, give us some. So, we have that, that research. The problem is, being a charter organization, has somewhat different rules than what we have around these, a lot of these things, and being in California, different rules. And so, we're actually, we talked, uh, we have an opportunity to potentially work with a consultant who's worked with STEM schools across the state around these issues. We were, Don and I talked to him one time, and he can help us a little bit with this work. Mm -hmm. Um, we haven't called them back yet, but we're, we're thinking about doing that to really help support this because, honestly, uh, we're, we're, we're pressed, you know, in terms of time right now because we already have some things coming up soon and we have to figure out how we're going to, uh, you know, how we're going to deal with it. So what we can do, in the meantime, like, as an example, um, after school's out, immediately after school's out, we have folks that are um, a district city town that wants us to work with them uh, fairly quickly in June around this kind of work. And so, in the meantime, we don't have resolutions. I'm not sure we'll have a resolution in May. I think we'll come close. It may be till June. But we can set it up so the district, uh, the funds go straight into the district, and then we figure out after that how to distribute based on whatever the board agrees to by the June meeting, at least. Mm -hmm. And so, that probably is our best bet, to try to have this mm -hmm. idea wrapped up by then. And have well, I should sure shoot for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, given that. What you're talking about is that the people want to be your door. I mean, we have July, and, and yeah. I mean, this, this is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is what we wanted. I mean, this, this is this is priority <laughs> four, yeah. right? I mean, that we, we no, wanted right. this just directly in with yeah. the prior yeah. right. and just right. uh, again, I think uh, some version of offline conversations to to make sure we're asking the right questions and giving the right resources and. Yeah, this yeah. is a good problem to have. Correct. Even if it's a headache for you right now, this is ultimately a very good problem to have. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Don is not so sure. <laughs> yeah, share your feedback, Don, because you, you obviously have some opinions about this. This is important for you, too. And how will we do the funding? This, this whole conversation I mean, about this. This is an important topic. I know that you have. Well, of know. course, it makes me nervous. I just want to <laughs> be above job. board and not do anything by mistake. I, I just view it a lot as when, I, when we did a community school, my previous job, and, and you have to keep everything separate and. Um, especially if it's going to be, I, mean, I don't know that we're saying it's for profit, but I felt a lot better after we met with, I can't, what is his That's name? Nice. And, and he reassured me that there's several ways that you can account for it and that there's ways that you can use it to support your regular operational budget by just paying for things that you, you know, might, might normally take it out of your budget paying for it with the funds that you're getting for it mm -hmm. for, from the people that are coming and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So. I feel a lot better, but I mean, uh, certainly, I would probably want to see a model of how it's done, and maybe maybe try to mock that. But 
I, I felt a lot more comfortable working at Akrotaki Inn. He, he's dealt with a lot of different things, um, and, and he seemed to feel relatively easy about it. It's not that big of a deal. So. So the last thing is uh, PBL Ohio presentation, very similar, lined up with this pre previous conversation we had. So we are um, presenting, at the, we've been asked to present at the annual PBL Ohio, um, big annual symposium, if you call it, uh, it's, a, it's an event, where uh, Beat Buck Institute for Education creates it and runs it, and we are, Yell Springs is going to be one of the keynote speakers on three days. They have keynotes for each day, and it's on, we'll be on the third day. And so we're going to talk about our journey with PBL from the beginning to where we are now. And then we're going to end with uh, having, we're going to bring kids and they're going to sit on a panel. And this whole, it's, it's, it's going to be at this humongous auditorium in, um, oh, not at Arlington, uh, New Albany New Schools, Albany, yeah. which apparently is this amazing, huge place. And I don't know how, I think there'll be hundreds of people at this conference, maybe four or five hundred people. They'll all be there listening to our kids and, and let's talk about what the work we're doing with PBL. So that will create more opportunities. And uh, that's July, July, let me get you the exact date. July 26, 27, 28, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and the 28th would be our day. Let me make sure because I think I want to ask you all if you're interested in attending. And I can, I'll kind of talk about that in a second. Let me go here real quick. Um, Yes, July 28th would be our day. Um, and so I'm excited about it. It should be a great opportunity and presentation for, for us. Uh, obviously, they're going to they're give us some funds. So we, that's another thing we have to figure out and work out as, as a board and a district um, to support it. They are going to give our kids um, you know, zoo passes or, or you know, uh, some kind of uh, maybe water park passes to be there and talk. And we'd like to have some teachers come out there and talk too and sit on a panel. And so um, there's some really interesting opportunities coming our way here, and so we just have to uh, make sure we, we're ready to, to do the work. Um, and so if you're interested in attending, I can probably set it up so that any board members who want to come can probably come for free on that third day. Um, normally it's a $900 conference, you know, for, per person. And so uh, if you're interested in coming on that third day, let me know over the next few weeks, and uh, I'd be good to do a lot of fun to be a part of it. <coughs> And it's going to be a fly on the wall in the audience and, mm -hmm. and the discussion going on. So that's all I have for my updates. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have anything? Okay. All right. So we're moving into the adoption of <coughs> the consent calendar, the administrative. And Don, just for no purposes, in that section it says items 4.2 through 4.5, and it's actually 4.6. Okay. Okay. Did you want to? No. Okay. So um, 4.2 through 4.6, need a motion. Second. 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 Okay. All right. Any uh, any discussion? Any, anything here? Two things I'll point oh, out. Well, oh, okay. three things I'll point out. First of all, this is the typical summer learning program and Title One summer program from both buildings that we create every year around this time. Actually, typically we've done it in May, and so we're kind of a month early right now, which is it's a good thing. Um, the <laughs> second thing is the ESC contract services that is up a little bit from last year, and I just want to explain a little, not a lot, just how much more is up. I think it's twenty last year. So it's forty thousand dollars up. The reason it's up is because we are actually going to be moving our site services from uh, the Clark ESC to the Green ESC for next year. Um, Terry Streeter has been trying to getting bring services back and this year she had an offer that was pretty good and, and we feel really great about the site that will be coming and working with our kids and so I think it's going to be a really good move for us in the right direction so we're excited about that change. Can I ask one question about 4.6 given yeah. the presentation we just had? Yes. We're approving a trip which the teachers suggested is very hypothetical. So, <laughs> so Here's 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 what I don't. It's not hypothetical. It's what they want to do. Okay. Um. The, here's what well, I, it doesn't matter. matter. I think this is an important point to make. Yeah. Glad you brought that up. I was going to talk about that. So they want to get it approved so that they can move forward if the kids are ready to do it. Now, okay. If by chance, the kids and parents say, "Because we're in this kind of weird place, we're trying to make good school choices to kids." And so, this is a trip you're approving right now. If it doesn't happen, and it, instead it's a different place, they'll come back to the yeah, board yeah. next okay. month for approval of a different trip. 
that's that's fine. Just thank that, you. If that if everybody's okay with that, mm -hmm. I think that's probably the, the move to make. So, um, can I go back to what you were saying about four point two? Mm -hmm. So when are things different? Uh, starting Is that in August. School year. School year. Yeah. So, I, I think it's a good change. It really is. I, I um, you know, I think uh, the site that we're getting, as I said, is going to be uh, pretty top notch. And uh, she's working in Bellbrook and a few other places, and got a lot of great positive um, feedback on, on her and, which, and the work she does. So it should be good. Okay. Anything else? Oh, all right. Well, Evan. Yes. Are you here? Yes. Sylvia? Yes. Steve? Yes. All right. Um, so now on to the consent calendar for personnel 4.7 through 4.11. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All right. Do um, I want to say something about 4.7 sure. and 4.8? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so 4.7 is a reduction in force. Um, this was a position that was created uh, at the start of this school year. Um, and it, it's not, uh, it was an additional special education position we added because there was a feeling from Mills Law School that they needed extra support, particularly in sixth grade um, and fifth, sixth grade kids. And so we did that. Um, a lot of those kids are moving on to seventh grade and it's a different structure over there. And um, we felt like we could, that, that we could that we could rip that position um, and, and still be able to support those kids at the at the middle school next year and, and here in the building. And so what you'll see next month is an increase. Um, uh, we have a 0 0.758 at the middle school now. We're going to increase that to 1.0 1 FTE next year. That'll happen next month, which is definitely tied to this particular move. And then a half-time aid here at Mills Lawn to help support uh, kids in, in, in efforts there. And we think that that um, that model will support uh, more inclusion in terms of getting kids and, and the needs that they have uh, for the different kids. I mean, every year we have different students who have different needs, and I think that's the right fit for the program that our kids need the next school year. So that's that's the reason for that. Um, I've had lots of conversations uh, with the teacher. Um, oftentimes, in a situation like this, you would do a non-renewal of the contract, um, uh, but we decided to do this because we think. There may be opportunities for that person to come back um, sooner than later. We, we think she's done great, and she's been a, a wonderful addition to our staff, and we really like her and, and the work she's done with kids. And so um, we're hopeful that that will happen um, if another position you know, opens up. Um, 4.8, uh, Matt talked a little bit about this. So this is the move that's necessary in order for us to be able to have 60 minutes of planning time. Uh, Illinois Lawn, and I, I apologize for this because if you remember, only a few months ago, <laughs> you uh, reduced <laughs> Joe Friday's so full time. Yeah, just two months ago, uh, and at the time we weren't sure about where we were going with the schedule, and so that's kind of where we, where we were. And so, but she only wanted to be here. Exactly, exactly. And so we have uh, Matt feels like, and I agree with him that there's a need here uh, to do that, and raising her to full time at Mills Lawn helps. Um, allow for the teachers to have that planning time that's necessary. Um, so important to note that I'll be coming to you to, we're, we're still planning on keeping that, that performing music, uh, performing arts class at the middle school setup. So what that means is we're going to have to add a, uh, a 0 0.33 position over there to make that happen, just so you know. I think that's an important point because we're technically, Joe Franny right now is full time to this year. And we're basically adding 0.4 here. So putting that out there next month, the bottom line is a 0.4 addition here at the elementary school, and that's what it comes out to when you balance it all out and you add the numbers in. So um, that's where that's. Okay. Any clarification? Okay, I'm sorry, we might have been clear as I would like to have been on that. Um, and then there's a leave of absence for Carlene. Obviously, also 4.10. Uh, we have Jamie here, and uh, he's on the agenda. He's still here. He's still here. <laughs> yes, this is fascinating. I'm glad I stayed. <laughs> no, it is. I mean, well, this is your last opportunity. If you want to run out the door, no. Now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big actually agenda. This particular uh, yeah. consensus. So uh, the non-renewal co-curriculars, uh, the, the supplementals for fall uh, sports, um, 
all of that is included in this particular yep. session. All right. Uh, anybody have anything? All right. We are going to take a vote. Alina? Yes. Sylvia? Yes. Steve? Yes. Evan? Yes. Congratulations. Yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard. I was telling Jamie I see him leave every morning at yeah, yeah. Six thirty. <laughs> no more will I see him. It's a luxurious start time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Compared to what I'm used to. <laughs> All right. So on to board communications. Green County Career. Uh, rough, rough waters over at the Career uh, Center last month. Um, we have some very difficult choices, or a difficult choice, to make about our remaining adult ed program, which is the Peace Officer Training. Mm -hmm. It is a very good program. It is regarded, perhaps, as the finest such program in the state, and it hemorrhages money uh, to the tune of between sixty and eighty thousand dollars a year. Um, and so uh, we, we need to examine this um, and we were in the process of starting to do this when somehow the word got out that we were going to eliminate the program and so at our last meeting we had a dozen sheriffs show up oh, wow. angry that we were going to kill this program which we had not in fact decided to do, it wasn't even on the agenda and it, it got a little bit unpleasant. So, that's, that's, yeah. <clears throat> we somehow managed over the years to give away all of the adult ed programs that made any money so that we would only keep the programs that lost money. That was under a, a, a previous regime. So, we're trying to clean up that mess. Mm, we're trying to get those programs back? They're not going to come back because now Clark State makes a lot of money no. on them. So, um, so they're not going to give them back to us. Um, yeah, it's a it's a dilemma. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Any questions on this? All right. Any other board member items? Graduation is May twenty sixth. Yay! And that's all of us to be there and attend. And I'd like to encourage everybody to start looking on both school websites <laughs> because this is the end of the year and there's a lot of calendar oh, yeah, the calendar, uh, stuff the is, calendar is full and I want to welcome invite the community to come and uh, see everything that's happening exhibition nights music concerts yeah, the, the global exhibitions the global, the global connections I just on the district art show district art yeah. show oh, what's that's the date for that uh, the 18th 18th, 18th. Thing. So anyway, these are all incredible um, May 18th exhibits, shows, performances, concerts, etc. And we would really like to encourage the community to come. But you really have to look at the calendar because it's really, really full. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention sports. Okay, so speaking of the, website, the sports award, we went through a process of getting bios and updates and photos taken. When is that all going up? Yeah, so sh I think she said she's still waiting on one board member. It's probably me. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know. so I tried to send a photo and it kept coming back. It's not working email wise, so I gotta figure that out. So once we have that, we'll be able to get everything. I don't mind if you put everybody else on that call. I'm working on mine. I have no problem with that. Put it all up, and then we'll get her through, and she'll get the photo ready. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I, so I you have the bio, right? Yeah. I thought she was pulling that from. Was she pulling it from somewhere else? Um, was it election stuff? Mm -hmm. Or there was some other place I thought where she okay. was getting that information. I'll check and see. I thought it was only the hold up on the photo. She and I are meeting next week. Okay. She, yeah, she sent me the stuff on the bio. So That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She had done that for you. Um, Megan. Okay, so uh, we are done. So right. we're going to. So May 18th. May 18th, Archa? May 18th. 6 to 8 p.m. Thank you. So we are going to. Yellowsburg High School. Actually, can I say one thing? Mm -hmm. um, since it showed up being kind of acknowledged, for 
maybe just Mills Lawn, but I um, want to thank both of you all and everyone involved in um, the um, health class experiences mm -hmm. yeah. going on this year. They're really a, a nice um, step up. So. Yeah, we're really happy about that. I think it's, um, I'm so glad that we have a community that that supports that and supports us doing that work. Very important for our kids to have those uh, experiences and be, to learn, you know. I think that's an yeah. important piece that's critically Thank important. So. And what is that? <laughs> uh, well, this is, that <laughs> this, is, uh, this, is the, this is the program on, uh, I guess, uh, uh, human sexuality and, and, and development. Oh. And so we're, yeah, it's more like development when you're in sixth grade. Yeah, and then <laughs> it's more. fourth grade. Fourth and yeah. sixth grade is more like development, and then as they get older, but I mean, it's basically, I mean, as a, as a science person, um, you know, it's Planned Parenthood, it's evidence-based, it's, um, it's, you know, promoting um, kids, you know, learning about themselves and um, relationships and having a sense of their self and not just sending them out in the world and not having dealt with all that versus, um, Basically, and, and this, this is still better than places where nothing happens, but honestly, I, there was a lot of frustration um, in years past when, uh, when we did do this work, we would often use a canned program from a large company in the Cincinnati area um, that had some good development information in it, but really was all about marketing products made by that company to our children. And I found that problematic, especially since many of the products are more for females. And in a family with only boys, it was kind of, after a while, not thinly veiled enough to make me feel like it was worthwhile. And so I, I really appreciate you know, the health future, the principals, and everyone else who was involved in making this change. Because yeah. it's ignoring a whole part of life that kids need to learn about mm -hmm. that's not doing anybody any favors. Yeah. And the kids really get to ask questions, they get to dialogue, it's like the program is formed around their their needs and their interests as well as age appropriate. Okay. 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 All right, so we are moving into an executive session now for uh, investigation of charges or complaints against an employee. So thank you everybody. Do you need a motion for that? Yeah. So, second. Okay.